Hey guys, it's been a little while. Um, today I'm finally going to get into what I've been promising you I was going to do for a little bit. And uh, this is the other side of my studio. You can see I got my exercise equipment there. I have a foam pumpkin, foam rubber up there. Got some little regular foam storeboard jack o' lanterns way over here that we painted. Um, these guys are actually pretty cool. You'll see them in some scenes. They, they, they make these little puppet kind of characters, but they were never going to work for the over the head pumpkin costumes that we needed for the movie. Um, this is, if you can fall apart a little bit, this is one of our paper mache over the head pumpkins. Um, and this is it with a human face attached to it. This one kind of freaks people out a little bit when they first see it. Because he's got the little globs on him of hot glue and the, the, the face grown into it that we weren't originally going to go for. They all look like jack o' lanterns originally, but I thought I'd try this out and People found it a little creepy, so we went with it. Um, this pumpkin, this jack-o'-lantern shows up a couple of times in the movie. Right here. And he's got this extra bit of this stuff attached to him as a kind of cover for the fact that this isn't big enough for everybody who wears it to cover all the way down the neck. And we didn't want too much human neck showing. Um, also, this one has a lot more walking around. Well, he's got some black paint on. He's had a rough life, this guy. He's already been through a bunch, and the next two weeks he's going to go through a bunch more. Our actor who wears this also needs to see out more. Um, if you've been at a convention yet and seen the secret Riley Morgan uh, clip, if you see her at a convention, she might have the clip playing on her table. Um, you might see this guy. So the actors that wear this need to be able to see around better. Um, the human face on the other one helps, but for this one we wanted that more jack or lantern look. We didn't want you to be able to see inside. So this this black here is um, the screening you would use. It's plastic screening that you use to put over the gutters on your house to keep leaves, debris, bugs, birds, things from building nests in your gutters. And um, I doubled it up and made the mesh a little tighter. You can see through it just fine, but seeing in when there's no light inside is kind of difficult. And then this kind of um, toga thing, we just hot glued around the bottom on the inside. So, there's plenty of places online that show you how to make these guys. I'm going to take you into the workshop, though, and show you some of the tricks I learned for them to make them a little quicker, a little cheaper, and hard as nails. Alright, so we'll be back in a minute. All right, gang, we're back in my workshop. Now, below in the description, you'll find links, or at least one link, to some of the videos that I watched where they showed me how to make these jack o' lanterns. Uh, what we've got here is a kind of messy work in progress um, because I was doing this one during the actual shoot and was rushing to get it done. Uh, and we didn't get it finished in time. So, Basically what you learn on those things is you have a bag in here, um, in here, that you stuff with newspaper, tie really tight. They make this little shape at the top and then cover this with paper mache also, and that's how they get the stock. Um, I do not do that. I use good old toilet paper rolls for the stock. I cover them in paper mache so they're easier to paint and keep these little rotational lines out, um, plus that makes them a little stiffer. But what I do is I leave this opening at the top open when we make it a pumpkin head. And when you have a face in the front, opening at the bottom for the head to go, the human's head to go in, and um, this opening at the top, you get some actual ventilation through here so your actors can breathe, which is really neat. Uh, and then this is over the top there, so they have a nice big hole. One pumpkin doesn't quite sit right on, on actors' heads. That's this guy. I made him. I gave him no face because he's kind of funky looking. Um, and his gourd on this side came out a little cut guy. And one of the funny things is, um, I say funny, it's a little annoying, but it's a little cool. The pumpkin shapes are all, the gourd shapes are all basically the same because I've been using the same big bag. Like I said, I like to recycle as much as I can. Um... So for that one, I've been using the same large bag. A lot of the guys will use a trash bag. It was too big for our purposes. I tried it. 
Um, even the little 13 gallon ones just go up too far. I tried some smaller shopping bags. They were not as successful in giving us um, a shape that would stay. More layers might have helped. Again, the, these little guys are going to get crushed, so we didn't want them too tough. Um, I've also left the bottoms open on these because they're going to get full of uh, either bags or water balloons. I haven't decided yet with some orange gunk in them, so when they get crushed, they make a nice orange sploosh of pumpkin guts. But these big ones, um, I've been using a big shopping bag, I forget where it's from, and put tape around it. They show string in most of the videos. The glue will stick to the string or the twine. Plastic packing tape, it comes right off of. But what happened was I didn't get as much of a shape of actual, um, these kind of splines on the pumpkin. You know, these, these little, each separate deal, I didn't get those. They're more gourd than pumpkin. The other thing I decided to do then, um, if you look at this side, there's a lot of newspaper still on this side. When I was trying to paint over the newspaper, even using a good gray primer, I would have to spray it with gray primer, then two coats of red or orange paint. And I, I tried red primer too, and that was not covering it either. And the newspaper print would show through. Uh, we tried using the white side of recycled scripts. Because of the wet on the paper mache, it would still show through. So... I finally came to the conclusion that this would be a good place to use my brown shopping bags. And this has worked out for two reasons. One, they they dry tough, right? So it makes it a nice. They're especially good for the top where, where you want some support and to at least put, if you don't have enough brown shopping bag to use for the whole thing, in some sides, you know, this corner, this corner, this corner, to give it some sturdiness, some strength. <clears throat> the other thing I realized is, you know, these lines in the paper, no matter how much you paint over it, they they show a little bit. They're a little bit of shadow. They're a little bit of, of they're there, especially in high definition, 4K, I can't imagine. Uh, we try to light them so you don't see it as much. In other words, we light them poorly. Um, but they'll still show up occasionally. So what you want to do for your top layer, so what I did, well, and the last thing with the, the brown paper it does not hold its shape very well. So if you try to make it the first layer, you, you won't. it won't stick to the plastic very well. It does, however, stick to other paper well. So what I did was I would use the newspaper or the white uh, A4 that we shred from um, old scripts as the bottom layer. And then most of the videos suggest at least five layers. We've been making these fast. We do two layers. So the top layer being the brown paper then, helps us to have a stronger, with just two layers, have a stronger pumpkin. Um, it helps us to paint over it and get the orange to read as orange, like that. And where it doesn't read orange, it reads as a darker, you know, brown or orange. Um, and then the final thing is, do the lines on the top layer, oh, look at that, I just wrote that. Do the lines on the top layer going down, so that when they do show up, they give more of that pumpkin look. If you do them across, it's going to throw off your, your pumpkin's look. You can see the front here. I still need to do some of the brown paper on top here. Um, but the front here has more predominant shapes. And our very first pumpkin, um, I believe, is this one. Our very first head smasher is this guy. And you can see he's got some really defined gourd shapes here. And his stock needs to be fixed. It's flopping off. Um, and then for paint, the first guy... Actually, that first one's covered in latex, too, which is... We did the liquid latex that we used for Gorilla Chest. Um, we did one coating of that over this, which really helped to smooth out the parts of the paper that, you know, didn't stick down properly. The other way to do that is just a really thick coat of white glue, which I'll talk about in a second. But So the liquid latex sealed this a little bit. Um, it's giving it a lot of good, I mean, this thing's been empty from paper, see the hole in the bottom where we take the, the bags and the stuffing out. This thing has been getting used and smashed over people's heads for weeks now. Um, and it's held up pretty well. So, that's, uh, and then, but you see that the shape changes a little bit every time. So we've been using the same bag with the same basic, sorry, pumpkins are falling all over. 
We use the same bag with the same basic um, tape shape and the same stuffing in there, but it changes a little bit every time. One of the problems is though, it loses some detail, so we're going to have to start stuffing it heavier again and tape it down tighter again to start getting new pumpkins. Um, but the fact that the shape changes a little bit every time means no two, even though we're doing it as this kind of factory pushing out pumpkin after pumpkin after pumpkin um, method, they all look a little bit different. So when you see them all together, they don't just look like the same pumpkin over and over again, which is kind of neat. Um, so for painting, what I did was, the first one, again, I tried spray painting, and I finally covered it in a, in a coat of orange latex, which, which worked great. But to do a bunch of them, I'll cover the name here, I went to uh, our hardware store and got a pint of pumpkin orange paint. And this, there's a room that people want to have pumpkin orange. you got to shake it every so often. You have to do it with spray paint, too. And they make these wall paints that are called single coat, which, again, with the letters from the um, from the newspaper and the other paper, did not work. If something's printed on it, even this single coat, that print will show through. But on the brown paper, single coat gets it done, which means you can do it a lot faster. Um, the other thing is it's low fume. They make these house paints with low fume. So when you're working in a place with less ventilation, it doesn't make you as dizzy or stupid as fast, and it's a lot less annoying to uh, be in, in the rest of the house when you've been using this all day. Finally, I say finally, uh, if you're in a hurry, there's there's two ways to make these. The, the many, many layers, which then you don't want to soak your paper too much. You want to clean all that, that uh, extra goop off like they show in the videos, put it on, and just keep rotating the layers around the... Um, onto each other every 20 or 30 minutes. They don't let it dry completely. Wet paper sticks great to wet paper. If, like me, you needed to get a pumpkin started, go out and do some shooting, come back, continue, go to sleep, edit, drop video into the computer, whatever. What you can do is less layers, but with more paper mache mix. So you take these sheets and you soak them in the paper mache. You see they don't lay as flat. So if you're going to cover it in liquid latex, that's a, that's a usable method. Or if you're going to glue them down before you paint it. You can just take white glue and go around and hold these bits down until they're down. And they're solid, and then you can just go ahead and paint over it. But what happens is the glue itself is what gives a lot of the strength to these. And the brown paper, if it's soaked, when it finally dries, but it will take overnight at least to dry if you soak it too much. But when it does dry, it's really hard. Um... And so in that case, you wind up with uh, a good solid pumpkin, but with a lot of time on your hands going out and doing other things. If you're going to be in the workshop to do it, absolutely, multiple layers and coming back to it every 30 minutes is the way to go. But if you have to leave to run errands for four or five hours at a time, like I'm going to do right now after we finish shooting this, then thicker layers, more glue, stronger grade of paper for your top layer, definitely the way to go. Um, that's it for today. I do have to go out and do some stuff. Sorry, guys, it's like we're coming up on springtime earlier than I expected. And that means a few things. It means more time that I can drive my um, non-four-wheel drive car, which I really enjoy. But also more time i got to get working up at our cabin, not to shoot the movie, but just because it's a cabin and it, it needs to get cleaned up for the season. Um, if you're interested in any of that kind of stuff, seeing leaves get shredded, trees get chopped down the wrong way, um, you know, the things I do in the yard, things I do around the house, trying to fix a gutter the wrong way, any of that kind of stuff, let me know. We'll, we'll start a separate, separate series of videos. And also, um, we're probably going to be adding to the channel. Uh, we're going to keep doing the inside HFPs, but we're going to start trading off, um, some skit and fiction stuff also. We have a series from years ago that I want to complete the second season of called, uh, The Simplest Things. We lost Pratt during a time travel incident, and he had to wait 40 or 50 years at least. Um, he was about 100 years from his mark, actually, when he got lost in time. But he lives a long time, so we've been waiting for that. So five years, really, in a 100-year span, it, it just kind of makes the series make more sense. Um, we're going to bring back some Johnny Pitchman videos. We're going to cross over Johnny Pitchman and Pratt from The Simplest Things. And we're going to start looking at some new web series, uh, one of them actually based on Lumber vs. Jack. So, keep your eye on this channel. We're trying to grow. We're growing a little bit. Let us know what you do find interesting, what you don't find interesting. Subscribe to keep up with everything. And, um, you know, we'll be back. In the meantime, 
Check out Lumber vs. Jack on Amazon Prime so that when Jack vs. Lantern hits, you're ready and you know what the story is. See you soon, guys. Bye-bye.